representing Stockton, California. Ah, yes, here is Nick Diaz. Some people wondered if we'd ever see him make this walk again. Good to see Nick Diaz making the walk to the Octagon team. From the 209, which you are also gracefully ah. representing with that tattoo. But Nick Diaz was the start of the Diaz dynasty. A guy that went out there every time and just gave it his all. His first round. One round fight with Paul Daly back in Strike Force oh. is still believed to be the greatest one round championship fight in history. Willing to go through the fire in order to make you engage him in the type of fight that he wants. He has phenomenal boxing and also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Beat Paul Daly and then returned to the UFC at UFC 137 to defeat BJ Penn at the time. His 11th straight win, the wildly popular Nick Diaz back for more tonight. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished strikers in this division. Sprawl and brawl, whatever you want to say, he's going to try to keep this fight standing tonight. It does not matter how he accomplishes it. All he wants to do is be on his feet and at range, hitting you with the beautiful jab, staying away from the grappling exchanges. You don't accomplish all the things that this man has accomplished over the course of his career without understanding distance. He has great distance management, which then in turn allows him to land all these beautiful diverse kicks, spinning back kick, jumping high kick, so many things he possesses that he will try to use tonight in this fight. Yeah, if this turns into a kickboxing match tonight, most it's people over. believe, yeah, his opponent is in a it's world over, of trouble. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. Diaz is nine years the elder. He is two inches taller. He will have a five-inch reach advantage. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 26 wins, 11 losses, and two no contests. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Stockton, California, Nick Diaz! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a boxer holding a professional record of 14 wins, eight losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Orlando, Florida, Mike Putnam Perry! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our third man in the octagon for this one. Great. First round is underway here. We say in mixed martial arts, it's one thing to have the reach advantage, it's another thing to use it. We'll see if he can get that jab going. He has got to fight tall. He's got to stay at range, use his length to give his. Wow. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Pretty good right hand. Immediately gets the underhook. Oh, <laughs> Perry gets caught with that punch. Oh! And able to avoid the punch there. Nice slip by Diaz. Oh! Big elbow! Oh, knee strike right to the midsection there. That's a big strike right there. Well, if you're gonna leave your body that wide open, you're gonna pay the price, and he certainly did there as his opponent lands flush to the midsection. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Great action to get that This game. might just be a matter of time. Oh! Brilliant submission. 
Russian defense there. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? You know when to hold him, know when, when to hold him. Yep, absolutely. Go. Well, he's staying pretty effective here, fighting off of his back. Nice strike landed there by the bottom by Diaz. Looks like he might attempt the guillotine now. Oh, we're getting a finish here. Oh, look at this. Jumps over into side mount to try to counter the guillotine. Maybe going with that Von Flute choke, or I guess we should probably call it the OSP at this point. submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So a seminal moment for this fighter here tonight as he gets the win by submission. Huge victory in his career, and it'll be very interesting to see how they matchmake him moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called to stop for this contest at three minutes, 29 seconds of the very first round. For the winner by submission, Mike Putnam the celebration is on in his corner and hard to blame these guys sort of waiting to exhale get a huge win tonight and not just the win but they get it by submission they knew what they had in front of them they knew how tough a competitor his opponent was but they also knew that if they could get this fight to the ground they could find a submission they found a submission he got his hand raised in the way that he loves the most